Well, thank you very much for coming, guys. Bear with me, but I'm a little bit sick, so my voice is going to sound a little bit like Darth Vader. <coughs> Sorry for that. Well, uh, I'm an independent director and motion designer. I combine my career in the industry with an educational profile. I'm the head of motion graphics at Scape Studios. Uh, today, I'm going to do kind of a mixed thing. So I'm going to show some works that I did. I'm going to show you the the process in uh, the methodology I use, and I'm going to speak a little bit about the term motion graphics. So how I started, you can see here a lot of influences that I had when I was a kid. I was still having that, like uh, Dick Smith, the makeup artist, or Ray Harryhausen, or I don't know, Alfred Hitchcock, or Iron Maiden, OK? Uh, that's why I studied fine arts. So I went to uni. It was a logical progression. So I specialize myself, I specialize on, uh, on drawing, also in sculpture. And then I discover the computer. It was an inflection point in my life. From that moment, I start having clean hands, because as you can imagine, painting and doing clay was always dirty hands. And from that moment, I have clean hands. And yeah, I'm that old. I started with Photoshop 4 without the internet. And what I do now, so uh, I work for films like Guardians of Galaxy or The Hobbit, for TV channels like BBC, for video games like Call of Duty, and for music videos uh, for artists like Paul McCartney or Lily Allen. I work for these kind of brands. I, this last year, I started doing master classes, conferences, and workshops. And this is my reel. I have also a PhD on design, on the specialty of motion graphics. My PhD was supported by the American designer Kyle Cooper, which uh, I went to LA. I stayed one month there with uh, the guys at Prolog Films. He was really kind, and he opened a lot of doors in the industry for me. And let's speak about the term motion graphics, because it's really funny how we use always motion graphics, motion graphics. but what it means, motion graphics. It's not an easy term to define. And uh, first, I'm going to speak a little bit about the first time that we have in the industry somebody saying motion graphics. It's in 1960, John Whitney, an uh, artist, and um, uh, uh, yeah, he was a really a weird artist. He's one of the fathers of computer animation later on. And he founded a company called Motion Graphics. So it's the first time that we have that term in history, as it is. And he, he was doing a lot of experiments. He built a mechanical analog machine, the one that you can see here. He was the one who created that kind of uh, graphics. He created the graphics for the film Vertigo with Saul Bass for Alfred Hitchcock. And then something that is really funny, too, is people usually think that motion graphics is something new and computer-related. But speaking about new, for example, 
Here you have, check the year, 1906, motion graphics. It's uh, an animation from the, the animator Stuart Blackton. It's proper motion graphics, and I think it's more than 100 years old. Okay? And speaking about computer animation, uh, this is like, these are the titles of the film Seven, made by Kyle Cooper in 1995. And they are considered the digital revolution of the 90s, but they were handmade. Okay, so as you can see here, a little bit of the titles. They were handmade, all the typography was done by hand. They create some codalith, they shoot it. So it's the example of the digital revolution and they were handmade. So what it means that it's nothing new and it's nothing necessarily computer related, okay? And let's start speaking about the term itself. Okay, the term is, motion graphics is a term full of controversy. Nobody agrees on a definition. So I went to LA, as I was saying at the beginning, and I asked some people in the industry what is motion graphics, and this is what they said. I don't like the term. I think it's a cheap way of describing really what it comes down to is filmmaking and design. A designed filmmaking, if you will. I mean, and we're entering this stage where films themselves are becoming more of a designed, you know, uh, piece, which to me is influenced by motion graphics, I think. I think filmmakers are now starting to accept that, you know, design is a very valid part of what they should be doing. And we see it the same way. We, we feel that you can't be a good motion graphic artist unless you have some aspect of filmmaking integrated into your work, at least you should aspire to do. Motion graphics is, is kind of a blanket term that's not necessarily the best description, but I don't know uh, what they would say is the best description because we do so many different things that get infused. To say if you're describing yourself, I'm a motion graphics person, motion graphic designer, that is a little bit limiting because you know, some of the best, more cutting edge work is done, you know, compositing and grouping together a, a whole number of mediums. So all of it in my mind is storytelling. It's graphic storytelling, um, you know, motion picture storytelling. I would put it in design. I would definitely put it in design because just the, like motion graphics today in Los Angeles or in here, it's, it's commercial based. It's just, it's design. And, and I just, you know, there are things that, and companies that do narrative short films that that do motion graphics that are doing those things and I think you know there crosses the line into art that I would if I were to pick a category it would be design. Motion graphics for me the term um, as I you know heard it being used in um, school um, was almost a, an exclusionary term it sort of meant not character animation not live action it sort of meant not a lot of things you know, I just, I just attack it as a film director, any project. And, um, you know, where the edit's going to be, how does the screen get laid out, just like I would if I was shooting a live action um, sequence. When I go into it, I don't think, oh, I'm a motion graphics artist. I just think I'm a director. I have to keep the audience tuned to the screen. To me, it's very different. So no one's really have defined what is motion graphics and is title sequence is motion graphic is seven is motion graphics what about the photography what about the mood what about the whole you know the whole story you know is a filmmaking process motion and graphics if we label that two together that means that graphic in motion if we literally interpret motion graphics as graphic in motion but nowadays film title is it is a filmmaking itself and it is a story a film by itself i think that we make more than motion graphics you know we make beyond just supplying graphics type and but we're creating a story and um and i think that is deeper than that the term motion graphics seems like it's a very simplistic definition of all that we're asked to do but it's like saying, um, calling a book designer a typesetter. 
you know, it's a lot more than setting type or it's somebody who thinks main titles are just putting type over a scene or just picking a typeface and putting it over a scene. You know, if somebody says, what do you do? I don't usually say motion graphics or what's the company do? I don't usually say motion graphics. You know, I was in India recently and I drove from the airport at Goa to the hotel I was staying at at Goa and the road was so colorful and there were all these hand painted signs and shacks and beautiful lush green trees and old rusted ships and I'm flying down the street with this driver and he's changing lanes and I'm seeing a piece of this and a, a cow's in the street and something else and I'm laying in my bed that night and I don't have like a linear memory of all that happened. I just have a flash of this and a flash of this and I just have this churning thing of all those things and that's what those titles are. It's just like you come and it's not like this happens, then this happens, then this. It's not a progression of a story. It's just like you come and you go, here's this context and you're, all, and, 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 and you're thrown into this context. And that's really what you can do with a main title in motion graphics. So yeah, it is like it can't have all that um, exposition, let's say, that the story does. So all you can get is, is an overall feeling or an overall impression. Okay, so motion graphics is just filmmaking and design. Okay, people in the industry is obsessed today with put, I mean, that kind of concept to put yourself inside of a, of a box. And being a motion graphics designer is really tricky because sometimes they call you to do just to put text in a video. Sometimes they call you to do, I don't know, some kind of uh, particle, complex particles flying on space. Sometimes they, you are just in charge of adding some text in, a, in some video. Sometimes you have just the briefing and you need to develop the whole video. So. I'm going to show you a few works that I, I participate doing it. Uh, I didn't choose them because they are the best ones. I just choose them because the process that I follow working it. The idea is the most important thing. This is the main software I use. Uh, it's uh, all the school software. Okay. Also, again, it doesn't matter which software do you use. It matters what you do with the software. People is always also obsessed with, oh, you use Maya, you use Cinema 4D. I mean, it doesn't matter. The important thing is the idea and the result. Then each project needs an, a specific process, uh, what it means that every time that I start a new project, I need to find a different solution because the, uh, let's say I, I heard some t so, uh, a long time ago somebody saying, I think it was an architect saying, I'm a problem solver, okay? So I consider myself a problem solver because it's always a problem, okay? Every project, any, you go to, 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 to speak with the client and they start speaking and as, as they start speaking, you say, okay, I never did that before, okay? And even if you work for, I don't know, 10, 15 years, you're gonna start every time, you know, learning about the process. What I'm gonna show you here, for example, this one, it's a, uh, it's a project that, let's say, follows like the traditional way. The traditional way is you start, well, this one, check just the right corner on the top. I don't know if you can see it. It says page 88. Okay? This is a traditional project for a brick brand. They send you the brand guidelines, which is 88 pages of authentic fun. As <laughs> you can imagine, you need to spend one morning just reading it. Okay? So it's like, do, you can and you cannot do like this, okay? Like, you cannot show my brand like that, but you can use it like that, blah, blah, blah. Then, after you read that, you start with having an idea, okay? With your idea, you create a storyboard, okay? This is the traditional way, okay? It's, a, it's the traditional filmmaking way, let's say. I mean, you start with a script, and then you start with a storyboard, okay? So the second one is a storyboard. And then in the industry, we use a play blast, which is uh, if the project is going to be built mainly in CG, uh, we create the models and yeah, it's this one, and you create a grayscale render, okay, to show it to the client. The first impression, this the, the first shells, as you can see here, they have a little bit of dust. The client asks to remove the dust because photography related, the dust means really bad, okay, which makes sense. 
you show this to the client, in fact, they are always gonna say, oh, it looks gray. Of course, man, it's without any texture. So you need to be the whole day, you know, liaising with the client and trying to make them understand that this is for the edit and this is what you're gonna show, okay? This is a traditional way. And then after this, you have the final one, which is this one. Okay, so this is a traditional process, okay? You have the briefing uh, from the client, also they give you like the brand guidelines if you need it. Then with that, you create something, you send it to the client, they approve it, you create the storyboard, then from the storyboard, the client needs to approve everything, okay? And then with the storyboard, you start modeling stuff and creating a play blast, and then the client approves that, you go then to texturing, to uh, lights to add everything else and then you deliver the job, okay? This one is kind of the same process but it was tricky in the middle, okay? It starts, I remember when they called me to to do, because this one, I mean in this project sometimes as I was saying you're a motion graphics artist and the previous one I did the edits, uh, I color correct a lot of stuff, I created all the text, and for this one, for example, they had an idea. It was, uh, they had a storyboard and they had also the, some kind of pictures they found on the internet about the final look they wanted to achieve. It was like uh, cinema noir, that kind of dark uh, detective world, okay? And they had no idea how to do it. Okay, so as a motion graphics artist, you suppose that you're the guy of the text, the After Effects guy sometimes, okay? And in this case, I created the whole pipeline. So I started with the storyboard, I started creating all the different ways that we were, that we, I mean, because we had a tough deadline. It was another thing that we had to do with this project. And also, they want to have like kind of comic book style, so just a little bit of animation. So let me show you, you will understand. So first, this is a storyboard. Okay, and then, still going on, you can see it was, uh, the tablet jo Lenovo Yoga. Okay. From this, I created this concept test of the final look to see if it was working. And yes, it was. We had render times, and from that, uh, style frame in motion, we start creating the whole pipeline. We did the 3D laptop, just we use stills, the whole project. I created all the backgrounds in Cinema 4D.
and then we did a shooting. Okay, this is one of the 3D guys. We did a shooting to have pictures to give them to the illustrator, and the illustrator did all he did all everything, all the drawings, and we put it back. So this is the process. We did the same for the folding process, but we selected just a few frames, like a stop motion, to be able to animate the 3D. And then we moved the hands and the guy according with the 3D movement. It's the only 3D bits. Okay, so you can see the process. I mean, there is no way that you can think about this in advance and you know put like no no if you have that kind of project you need to do a shooting it's something that you discover every time you discover the process it's i mean i, I never did two exactly i mean two projects with exactly the same methodology it's always different different that's why i love my profession that's why i love to be motion graphics artist because probably if you work in movies you work in a really strong pipeline so if you are doing the hair of harry potter you're gonna doing the hair of, I don't know, James Bond, or the hair of whoever, you know, you're gonna be always the hair artist, or the TV, or whatever, but as a motion graphics artist, you, you have no idea what's next. Okay, so I think that's it. And this is the final video. It was really, really complicated to to work in this one because I think we built it in less than one month. It was three weeks and something. I did more overtime that I can remember. I was working like the hell. At some point, it, it's everything blurred in my mind because we were working till late every, every day, every day. I don't like that anymore. I used to do it, but now I prefer just to work during the day. It's supposed that if you are working in a project, I mean, there's always a never-ending project, so you can stop at six and just start at the next day. But with this one, was crazy. So this is the final result. Okay, so the first one that I showed you, it was like a really, really traditional way. The second one is kind of a hybrid. It's a traditional way with some kind of improvisation in the middle. Okay, let's do the shooting for that kind of things. And then I'm gonna show you a personal project. I'm still working on it. I started probably one year ago, but I'm always busy. So I just started and it's work in progress. But this is like another way of working that I really love this one and it's like just start I started straight away okay I had some drawings a few ones really bad ones and then I start opening After Effects and Cinema 4D and I started doing I don't know I create a starship I create a vehicle okay I had in my mind some kind of spacey stuff because I was thinking oh, I would love to do something related with space so I was obsessed with UI design at that moment. I'm still obsessed with that. So I created this, all the graphics in motion. Okay, so it's kind of weird. So you have a Starship, a vehicle, some graphics in motion. And I, after spending two weeks doing everything that you watch already, I say, okay, I need to do, put something together to see how it looks. And I create just one shot to see Okay, I say, yeah, it's nice, but I don't like it. Okay, so let's move on. I started doing more tests and tests and creating another style frames. And as you can see, it's just crazy stuff going on on the computer. At some point you stop, you put everything together. Yeah, it looks cool. You render, they call it a style frame. Okay, <laughs> for a reason, it's you're trying to sell your idea. But I'm pretty sure that when I finish 
this presentation, the presentation of this project, you're gonna pick inside your head exactly what is this project about. But I started, you know, doing renders, like just meanwhile I was working as, okay, I model everything, so it was the hell. I spent days and days and days and days doing that for no reason. Then I created this, like a style frame. I said, okay, I like it more than the other shot. So I started being crazy. I, I don't know, I went cocky and I said, yeah, let's do more style frames. So I started creating more style frames, okay. And as you can see here, I create, I was inspired by, I mean, I created this in Cinema 4D following a tutorial on the internet that I found trying to throw in style or whatever. I said, oh man, it looks really good. Let's put it together and create something, okay? And then I say, okay, but why, what if I start adding some motion and testing the graphics, okay? So, now you have an idea, right? If I tell, if I start, instead of saying that, I'm starting telling you, oh, this project's gonna be like this, I'm gonna tell you blah, 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 it's gonna be inspired on this and that, you pick the idea really straightforward. What it means that this is another process. It's a process where you create directly some style frames based on a story, and you sell your idea to the client. Okay, you can write something, a script, a small script, you can show, I don't know, five or six style frames and say, okay, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna, do this, I'm gonna do that. And this idea, this is the way of working to do pitches, okay? When you pitch for a project, usually you create some style frames and you, you can sell your idea with, with two small animations, two tests, a uh, few uh, style frames, and if you pitch for your idea, if, and if you win, okay, you can start doing the project. So this is a different way of working, okay? And now I'm gonna show you well, this is part of the same project because at some point I said, okay, I would love to integrate live action. Okay, and I was, I just usually go with my telephone and I love to shoot stuff, random stuff. And I, one day I was in the train and I shoot something from the train and I created this shot. Okay, it's in Blackfriars Station. It's an integration of reality with the screens. So it was for the intro of the project. Okay. So it's still work in progress. <laughs> At some point I will finish it. But the, the, the methodology is really different from one to each other. It's going like crazy, 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 crazy. And this one was the best. I mean, this is the most crazy thing I ever did in my life. Okay. Yeah, I directed a previs for a, an ad. The director came, it was at MPC, and he had an idea, and he was really obsessed with his idea. He was based on an analog machine, who was able to pump and made explode balloons. And he had in mind, they, they win the pitch with a small video. It was some music, and he was popping balloons, like pop, 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 at the rhythm of the music. He came with a, with a notebook and a pencil, and he started making drawings from a top view of a room and in his mind and whatever, and said, build it, okay? And I said, okay, we can do it. But then this, he said, yeah, but you need to be sure that you're gonna build it in real, for real, because we're gonna use the data of your camera for a motion control camera. Imagine that, I'm a motion designer, okay? What the fuck, I mean, I never used that motion control camera I mean, it's a really expensive machine. I had no idea. So they say, yeah, you can do it. Okay, so we started, as I was saying, this is a crazy process. Uh, where, where are you gonna start with? Okay, we started with a telephone call to the motion capture guys. Okay, like, come on, how we can do that? Okay, so it's a different process. You cannot be prepared to do that. And this is the result. This is the camera. We created, this is the premise. This looks like that. And it's just to make everybody aware what's gonna happen. But this one, it was to control cameras. Not only cameras, cameras and the balloons explosions too. 
with a MIDI track. This is the first te test on set. Playing with symmetry. We send this because they build everything. The art department build everything regarding our free, uh, our Cinema 4D files. This is the, a mixture between the result and the process. Probably you watch it on telly. Okay, it was a nightmare to work on this one, a really nightmare. But as I was telling you, I mean, now I show you four different projects, which they have in common, nothing. Okay, this is motion graphics. So welcome, if you work in the industry, you know already what it means, but it's like, come on, every day is some challenging. I'm a freelancer, so every time somebody calls me and I'm, oh man, first five minutes is I sit and they start speaking to me, and sometimes I say, yeah, okay, I can do it. Sometimes I say, yes, I can. And my mind is like, oh, fuck, man, how can you build it? Because imagine that. I mean, I never used a motion control camera in my life before. But we build everything. And everybody, I mean, a whole crew and a lot of money, it was just waiting for us to develop the premise. Okay, that's why I, call, I, I say to my students that we need to be problem solvers. And it's what... It's what I love of this work. You are learning always different stuff, different stuff, different ways. But always the, the, the key for me is to be organized and to create a plan and always to test in advance. If you remember, I showed you one bit, the video of the, of the Lenovo Yoga tablet. We did a test. It means that you do something to check the render times, to check how it works. And because in your mind, and even if you have you have a lot of experience. Your experience sometimes is, is a bad advisor because you went cocky. You say, yeah, yeah, I can do it, I can do it. And then you start rendering and it's, oh man, it's 15 days. One frame, for example. It can happen. You know, it can happen. So you need to test it before, in advance, always. So it's, the secret is just, to me, always to be prepared and to create a plan and follow that plan and, you know, and create stuff. As a motion designer, you can work, I mean, it's like, it's like a cross-media profession, which I like to. You can work on advertising, animation, broadcast, multimedia, games or film, you name it, you can work on it. For people doing a startup, I don't know. Even, I mean, if you are in the tube, those, the screens that you are watching on the escalator, you can work doing that, okay? And this kind of profiles is something also, also recruiters. I don't know if somebody here is a, recruit, a recruiter, sorry. <clears throat> if it is, sorry. But I really, I mean, I don't like recruiters really too much because they have no idea what they're talking about. Okay, they say, yeah, uh, we need a motion graphics uh, artist. Okay, oh uh, yeah, yeah, proficient on cinema for the and after effects. Yeah, okay, uh, do you, do you are, are you gonna be able to do an, yes, yes I can. And then you go to the job and it's editing on Final Cut. And it's like, come on, man. I mean, and also they have no, in, in the industry, not too many, I mean, a lot of people think they know what it means a motion graphics, but if you work long enough, you know that nobody knows. I mean, a motion graphics artist it means a lot of this, you name it. I mean, you can be all of them, just two, you can choose, you know, like a, like a game. Okay, I'm number two, number six, and number five motion graphics artist. Okay, or I'm number seven. Or I have all of them, and also I know how to shoot live action, for example, which I do. Okay, but how can you sell yourself? It's something that happened to me, you know? Is I spent, I, I changed my profile like probably 50 times in my life. I started being, uh, I'm a designer, but then people, oh, what it means a designer? Okay, I'm a motion designer, okay, but do you do live action? Yeah, so I am a director and a motion graphics artist. This is the last one, but I, I've been, I mean, I was creative director for more than 10 years. 
I've been art director, I've been concept artist, I've been, I mean, I've been doing a lot of stuff. Okay, so which name do you pick? It's like, uh, but I mean, mainly we are designers. I mean, and that's it, and it, it could be enough, but it's not. That's why we have this list. Okay, imagine that in a CV. No, in your li LinkedIn, just profile, okay? Whoever, designer, no, no, this list. There is no way. Anyway, uh, as I was telling you, I'm the head of motion graphics at Scape Studios, and I'm really proud of my students. We run right now an evening course. It's being, this is the four or fifth edition, and I'm gonna start the day course on September. It's gonna be just intensive three weeks. Okay, uh, let me show you the work my students create. That's it. Any questions? Yeah. Just a, a creativity question. Okay. Really. So obviously you're bridging the gap between creative and designer. Um, but as a designer, generally I, I guess we're more process driven and driven by the software that we know and driven by the ideas that we probably know we can create. Do you find that you've you've got a way of breaking out of the, the, the way of coming up with ideas that you know you can do. Rather, so as you say, you, you've, you don't want to work late anymore, but you yeah. know the kind of projects that yeah. will force you to work late, but yeah. they're often the projects that will be um, probably the most inspiring at the end of it. Do you find that you shy away a little bit from that well, nowadays, or do you, do you have other people to worry about? Let me, I mean, my way of thinking is a little bit different from what you're saying. I mean, to me, Learning is a never-ending process. I, I mean, I will stop learning when I die, okay? So I learned a lot of different softwares during my life. I mean, I can create a list. And I've been jumping from one software to other, one software to other. The software is a secondary thing. It's like, to me, it's like a tool, okay? Uh, for example, I remember, uh, well, it doesn't matter the, the softwares, but the, the important thing is what you can do and at some point. If you are doing a vector, uh, I don't know, vectors in Illustrator or something, and Adobe broke or whatever, and they say, yeah, we're not going to release again Adobe. What are you going to do, man? Kill yourself? You need to learn another one. It's going to be similar. I started with 3D Max, for example. For instead, now I do Cinema 4D. I started with 3D Max, which I hate. That's software really deep inside of me. Rightly so. <laughs> and I jumped it. I jumped at some point. Okay, I said, okay. I like this software more, and I started learning, learning, learning. It is a process. I mean, of course, you need to have ideas that you can do, but you can. You need to challenge yourself always. If not, it's going to be really boring. At least to me. I mean, I'm I'm a creative. I mean, okay, let's put the things. I mean, I studied fine arts. Okay, I, I show you what I started doing. You know, drawings, sculpture. I started working as that. To me, the most important thing is, is the ideas, the thinking behind everything. The result is, is the secondary part, okay? So I don't mind. So my advice would be, I mean, do whatever. If you need to just stay in a box and say, okay, this is what I can do in your comfort zone, you're gonna produce like a machine, 
if you want to be creative, you need to challenge yourself. So at some point, you need to start thinking, oh, I don't know, man. Uh, let's watch a tutorial. I mean, I'm still watching tutorials. That's why I catch all my students like, hey, man, you follow a tutorial. I watch it, this one. It's, it's cool. You know what I mean? Do you have any tips for showreels in particular sort of length and things? And um, I know some people sometimes say create five second clips um, just of personal projects and kind of use that for showreel. Would you rather see something like that or commercial work or work for clients? I don't mind, man. Yeah. I mean, to me, the only thing that it matters is that whatever is in your reel needs to be cool. I mean, I saw a reel, I remember I was showing it to my students, I think a couple of weeks ago, it was five minutes long, but it was Mr. Danny Jones. Okay, so that guy can have a reel of one hour. <laughs> okay, and you can be amazed. and watching like, oh yeah, man, oh yeah. Okay, my previous one, my previous one was two minutes, 15. This one is one minute something. So the industry is changing. So just go to motionographer or whatever, check what is like going on and try to match it. But it's better to have five amazing seconds instead of 20 really boring stuff. Sure. Do you update it every, every year? Or <laughs> just, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I did this one uh, last summer because I was attending a big event in Spain. They invited me to do a conference. I said, man, I'm really ashamed of my four years old reel. So I've created that and it's, yeah, I created this summer. That's precisely how I feel about mine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else? Yeah. Hey, um, I was just wondering, with the Lenovo uh, ad you did, yeah. that you worked on that yourself, right? Was, was it just you or did you have a team, sorry? No, no, the... did you remember it was a list at the beginning? Oh, but in terms of, sorry, in terms of the graphics themselves, was, was it just you that was oh, but, putting what, them what, together? What or? are the graphics, man? Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a complicated process. Yeah. What I did my, by myself yeah. is all the backgrounds, okay. all the 3D of the backgrounds, I did it by myself. Cool. And I directed the, the illustrator guys. I was in charge of them and they were doing stuff and I was saying, okay, man, repeat this arm or just cut the arm in Photoshop and create another layer. Uh, let's just create two different positions of the head for this one because, you know. Yeah. And then it was another team in India uh, creating just the stills of the laptop. Uh, okay. Okay, for the stills. So. so I suppose what I was wondering in terms of um, when you've got a deadline to go to, to work to, I was just wondering where you find your cutoff in terms of getting the shot where looking the way you want it to. In oh, terms it never of, happened. Like, yeah. <laughs> never. Okay. Never happened in my life. I never said, yeah, that's it, deliver it, okay. done, never. I always been working till last minute, okay, saying, oh, I can improve it, I can improve it. Okay. We need to send it, oh, send it. At some point you say, yeah, it was nice. <laughs> I been never be, I mean, I never be, because you go through different uh, phases during the process, at some point you start loving it, you are really in love, like in your relationship, Okay, like, oh, whatever, blah, blah. At some point, you start hating what you are doing. Okay, like, really deep inside of you, like, shit, I don't like it. I don't want to, I'm ashamed, blah, blah. And then you go again, up, 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 you know. And to me, the only thing that it matters is after two or three years, if you watch it again, and if you still like it, it was nice. If not, remove it from your portfolio. Um, you mentioned you were working in After Effects and Cinema 4D. Yeah. How do you find the workflow between those two softwares? Oh, really good. Yeah? Yeah, I like it. That's why I use them. Right. Um, and which After Effects version are you on? Oh, I don't know. Are I, you on the latest one? Or are we back? Like, not really. Uh, right now, I stayed in the... 2014. I don't remember which one because I have all my setup and it was working. And then they started releasing like each week or whatever, yeah. and it was crashing and doing stuff. And I say, yeah, man, uh, I'm just gonna have it here installed. At this, at, you know, I have one and the other one, but the new one is like crashing and crashing and crashing. And yeah, but it doesn't matter, man. You can use whatever it was for you. Cool. In fact, I know a, a really well-known illustrator. I'm not gonna say names here but he's working with an obsolete software. I mean, it's really funny. 
because uh, Adobe is always uh, tweeting about him and you know and <laughs> showcase him like oh check this Illustrator. He never used Illustrator. He used an obsolete software. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell names, but yeah. So it doesn't matter. It works for him. Hi there, my name's Scott. Uh, I've got a question about your uh, emotional. You seem like a very emotional guy. Would you say that emotion is part of motion graphics? Uh, it can um, be, but it depends on people. I know really sad people who are really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just a, the guy was describing the journey uh, that he had from his airport to his hotel. Yeah. And I just thought that was quite uh, an interesting way of looking at it in, in, the, in the sense that you put... When you're doing a motion graphic for a movie at the beginning, it, you tend to be telling the story of the movie in a few seconds of snippets, like a dreamlike sequence. And I just think that emotion, your work seems to have a little bit of emotion. It's, it's driven by yourself. Um, do you think that's really critically important? Or do you think, like you say, you can just get by oh. however? I don't know. It's like saying, like, when you're designing a logo, for example, which I do, I'm still being a designer. And designing a logo, you can say a lot of stuff, okay, but at the end, it's something that you're doing for somebody else. So even if you put your soul and something and everything you have, somebody else is in charge, okay? So it doesn't happen, or it doesn't happen to me, probably to everybody else but me, I don't think so, that you're like a machine sometimes, okay? And you don't have time, and your client doesn't understand, you know, what it means to have emotion. They just need to deliver on time, the logo bigger, you know, and longer. And that's it. Cool. So, well guys, thank you very much for attending and thank you very much Escape Studios for inviting me.